We know computers are great with numbers, usually. But how does a computer store numbers? Some of you might answer, we use zeros and ones. That's right. But how are those zeros and ones organized? Aha. How do we make numbers out of the zeros and ones? And that's what this lesson's about. The goals for you for this lesson are to understand how numbers are represented using binary and hexadecimal. We also want to look at how no Java stores numbers. This will help us understand the different primitive number types. Now, the first type of number we can store in Java are the counting numbers. These should be the numbers that you're most familiar with. 1, 2, 3, etc. These numbers also include the number 0 and negative numbers. The counting numbers are sometimes called the set of integer numbers. Now these numbers go on forever in both the positive and negative direction. On a computer, you can't represent every number. No matter how you construct a number, eventually you're going to run out of space on the computer. The set of valid numbers that you can use is limited in something we call a Java primitive. The reason for this is simple. In a computer, a bit is used to store a value of either a 0 or a 1. This is the smallest piece of information. If you want bigger pieces of information, you need to string more bits together. Now your first thought might be, string more ones together and just count them. So for 12, that's a lot of ones just to represent 12. Imagine if you wanted a bigger number like 42 or a million. That plan's not going to work. Think about how you represent decimal numbers based on powers of tens. A decimal number increases by powers of tens for each decimal place. So 123 equals 1 times 100 plus 2 times 10 plus 3 times 1. This is really 1 times 10 to the power of 2 plus 2 times 10 to the power of 1 plus 3 times 10 to the power of 0. Now it might not look like it, but this is the decimal system that you learned when you were a kid. We do the same thing for binary numbers in a computer. Like a decimal place, we have binary places based on powers of 2. So to represent 12 in binary, we have 1 times 8 plus 1 times 4 plus 0 times 2 plus 0 times 1. 8, 4, 2, and 1 are all powers of 2. So in the same way we represent decimal numbers, we can write 12 as 1100 in binary. Even binary numbers organized this way can get crazy. As you can see, we needed four digits to represent 12. As numbers get large in binary, we typically switch to a secondary number system called hexadecimal. This number system is based on powers of 16, and we use the letters for the digits beyond nine. So you're probably wondering why 16? It's not a random number. Each hexadecimal digit is really a block of four binary digits. So binary 1010 is hexadecimal A, or 10 in decimal. Pretty cool, huh? Hey, thanks for watching the video. There's a quick quiz for this on DGU.com if you'd like to gauge how much you learned. If you like the videos you're seeing, please let me know by liking the video and hitting the subscribe button for the DGU channel on YouTube. I'd really appreciate that. If you have concerns or questions, please leave them in the comments below or on DG.com. There's a poll on the front page of DG.com, so you can also let me know what topic gets covered next. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.